So now I've got essentially my completed piece except for a handle. I've taken the um, material that I used to hold it in place and I've wedged it up pretty good. And now I'm going to start making a handle. Now you'd think you'd just like roll a coil or something for a handle. Don't do that, it doesn't make a strong handle. So I'm going to be showing you how to pull a handle. I've taken the ball of wedged clay and I've made almost like a carrot shape. And you'll see why that is in a minute. First thing you're gonna do, you're gonna take, this is my left hand, I'm gonna take my non-dominant left hand and my right hand I'm going to dip in the water and I'm going to start to ever so gently stroke downwards on our handle and this is kind of hard for you to see because of the angle oh this is going to be difficult So you can already see that I've begun to get some length, but it's still stiff enough that I can turn it over and it stays upright. And you want to keep your hand, your dominant hand, whatever hand you're actually using, fairly free of slip so you want to keep that water nearby and you're going to want to turn it. Otherwise it'll end up lopsided. And what this is going to result in... I'm turning this so you can see it a little better is it's gonna end up with a handle that is fit to your hand rather than a coil which is just gonna be round and isn't actually as comfortable to hold so you can turn it only in two directions if say I went this way and then turned it 180 and went back this way and went back and forth like that, it would give me what's called a strap handle. And I'm going for a little bit of a strap handle, but not too much. You can see that I'm thicker in this direction than in this direction, but I'm still keeping pretty good thickness in this direction. So a strap handle would be very thin in this direction and thicker in this direction. that it's gonna go on. So I've got my pot sitting right over that way and I keep looking at it to make sure that I'm not making my handle either too big or too small for my pot. So I'm getting pretty good length here and you'll notice that if I turn it over it starts to curve a bit. So I just need to get a little bit more clay off here and work it downward and I'll have a good handle. Okay, so now I've got a handle that's about the length I want it to be. Now I'm going to take my hand, and this is just kind of hard for you to see, I'm going to stroke it in this direction. And this requires no pressure at all. You're just turning your hand as you're following the curve. You see it reaches down to meet your ball of clay. This is the um, curve that's going to have the strongest handle for this thickness. So in a second here, I'll show you how to get your now completed handle off of your ball of clay. Got my handle and if I put it up next to my pot, I can see that I've got pretty much maybe a little bit big, but about the size and shape that I want. So next thing to do is to get it off this ball. I'm going to take my thumbs on either side of the ball, and I'm going to press down. And that should keep it sitting right where you need it. Next thing you need is your wire tool. And this part is a little tricky. You're going to, first of all, line up where you're cutting 
with the bottom. You're gonna figure out where you wanna cut. And I personally like to cut a little closer to the bottom of that curve. Once you're there, you're gonna reach around and you're gonna pull towards this point right here with this hand while supporting the handle with this hand. So first, needs a little bit of a help. Once you're through a little bit, it's gonna come right off and you're gonna need to support that handle. So now, I have my handle and I'm gonna set that right on the table. It's a little bit crooked. So if that happens, you're just gonna smooth it down to the table. for a little bit there. Okay, so I now have my completed piece and I have my handle. And you'll see, if I go to line up my handle with my piece, it doesn't... Is that done it? It doesn't quite do that. shape ever so slightly. Until it lines up. Once you have that line up, you're going to take your needle tool and you're going to trace around your handle. Both at the top. Nice parallel handle. And guess what we set this for? Now, in this case, you'll see that we have a very round end to our handle. We do want to have a good enough surface area which our handle is contacting our piece. So I'm going to just take off a little bit of that till I have a nice flat form. And then score that flat form. top and bottom. Put the rest of it on the actual handle. And now what we're going to do here, we're going to push it in top and bottom until our slip comes out around the edge. And we're just gonna rock both sides back and forth until we feel that there's a firm attachment between our pot and our handle. Once we wiggle it till it won't wiggle anymore, we're going to smooth around so we have a clean transition between our handle and our pot. And there's two reasons that we do this. First of all, so it looks nice and neat. 
if that matters. And second of all, it will reinforce and strengthen the attachment between our handle and our pot. If we don't smooth out that transition, there's less of the handle that actually ends up in firm contact with our pot. And so that attachment is weak, which can either result in the handle cracking off during firing, which is sad, or it could crack many years later and just not have a nice marriage to your piece. So for right now, of course, we can clean that up a little bit more later. You can see I've got little uh, bits of slip around on the surface of the piece. That is completely fine. But we now have a nice handle with a firm attachment to our mug. And that is the conclusion of how you make a mug.